Mmh. C'est bien. Toute l'histoire a un commencement et comment vous avez connu euh, des guignets C'est-à-dire que je voyais tous les soirs à New York euh, les, euh, les actualités françaises euh, sur France 2. On parlait d'un rage à Paris pour un, un, un livre qui était paru il y a un an ou deux avant en Bretagne. Euh, qui était l'histoire euh, retrouvée, un euh, narratif retrouvé d'un euh, un, un, un homme du euh, 19e siècle qui avait écrit toute sa vie et qui s'était étrange. Et, alors ça m'a beaucoup intéressé parce que c'était tout de même euh, assez rare qu'on entend. Alors j'ai parlé avec un, un éditeur à New York et j'ai dit, toi tu vas à Paris, est-ce que tu peux me ramener cette, euh, ce livre alors, euh, il est venu, il n'en savait rien, il est revenu aux, aux États-Unis, il a dit « J'ai acheté le livre, j'ai même acheté les droits du livre, et c'est toi qui dois le traduire. » Quand vous avez lu le livre, qu'est-ce qui vous a le plus intéressé dans son, dans son discours Son, son arme, ses susceptibilités. Euh, euh, qu'il lui a tourné en quelque façon de, de reconnaître les détails du monde, le monde dont il surgissait et le monde qu'il a, qu a, qu a vu en sortant de la Bretagne et de la France même, parce qu'il a fait des batailles de, de euh, Napoléon III dans, en Algérie, en, en Crimée, on est allé à Jérusalem pendant ce séjour-là, et puis en, au Mexique. Alors, il voyait tout et tout le temps, c'est un auto autodidacte de premier ordre. Il s'est tout enseigné. So he knew how to look. Alors, il savait voir les choses économiques, politiques, euh, euh, personnelles, enfin, les, les, les manières des gens, tout ça. Incroyablement alerti, presque péniblement pour lui. Il en savait trop. Tout lui faisait de la peine. Pour vous, quelles ont été les, les, les difficultés de traduire ce livre Parce que c'est assez profond dans la, la, la culture bretonne et bretonnante de cette époque-là. Est-ce que ça n'a pas été une difficulté pour vous de traduire euh, cet aspect Mais vous vous rappelez que vous avez, vos éditeurs ont laissé quelques, euh, quelques mots, quelques terminologies qui étaient très bretonnes en ça, en, 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 en elle-même, mais aussi des, 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 des termes qui, qui impliquaient une manière de faire, une, une, une point, un point de vue. Alors pour ça, j'ai fait autant que j'ai pu en lisant, mais aussi j'ai pu, euh, j'ai une grande correspondance avec vous et euh, ça m'a beaucoup aidé quand quelque chose me semblait clair, mais pas exactement clair pour les autres. Je voulais que ça soit trans transmis de par moi au lecteur, alors on, on en parlait. Je voulais entrer dans cette euh, vie euh, autant que possible et je voulais donner cette expérience euh, au lecteur aussi. Et maintenant, donc, il y a une édition poche à New York. J'avais souvent l'impression que Desguigné lui-même était formé un peu par ses lectures. C'est-à-dire, ce n'était pas toujours seulement ses premières impressions de choses. Ils, ils en savaient quelque chose, ils formaient ses attitudes là-dessus. Euh, C'était par l'âge de 40 ans. C'était quelqu'un qui, euh, qui était informé par euh, des grands penseurs. Il lisait Montaigne.
Did you? I heard on French television in New York, which had a nightly newscast in French, they don't do that anymore, um, that uh, Paris had been taken by, had, had the uh, Paris public had begun to read this book from Brittany, by a, written by a 19th century fellow, a strange fellow, who had been born in abject poverty, who had pulled himself up out of it by learning learning to read Breton and then French from the Evangile and then, uh, and then eventually other languages, had ripped himself out of his terrible roots and had finally joined the army in order to leave Brittany and travel the world a little but to enlarge his own horizons. But uh, all I knew at that time was that, that uh, it was a terrific uh, vogue in Paris to read this thing, and I asked an American publisher to bring me a copy so I could see it. And he did, and he bought the rights, and he asked me to translate it. And uh, I found it a completely fascinating, difficult uh, book to translate because the tone is so particular to this fellow, and because there was a lot of history that I had to read in order to use the terminology and the, discour and the discourse of the time properly, which I do for all translations, of course. What caught my attention, caused me to actually postpone other translations I was doing and do this. It took a long time to do. It was a, almost a year to do this. Um, was this in, uh, amazing character, this autodidact, this self-taught kid who came from really the very roots of the potato fields in uh, Brittany at their worst time, uh, uninformed agriculture, very vulnerable to every kind of sway and ultimately to the fa potato famine. But this kid who had absolutely nothing and whose family only thought to train him to be a beggar, uh, finally pulls himself up learns to read Breton uh, against the wishes of everybody and comparing the Breton to the, to the French Evangile Gospel. He then taught himself that. Little by little, he read everything. He then, the book, his life comprises everything in the 19th century that I needed to know about France. That is from the point of view of the, of the deep regional roots and its view of of the uh, limitations on life in Brittany, the very hard hand of the church, the, uh, the poverty, the uh, absolutely frozen um, uh, relation between the classes and all that. And then he joins the army, he goes out to see the world, and then he, he tells us everything about, from the point of view of the common soldier, what the world was like in the Crimean, in uh, Algeria, in Mexico, in all the battles that uh, were fought by the third. Empire, uh, which was an enormous uh, delight to me, also so very personal, really quite uh, ec eccentric and harsh. Uh, he saw everything and he saw it very uh, pointedly and it was hard for him to know as much as he did because he was surrounded by people who were always less conscious than he. And so it is literature. It is definitely literature, but it's it's a it's a rampagingly like les trois mousquetaires. I mean, it's all over the place, and it's fun and it's funny and he's bitter and sad and he he criticizes everybody and everything, all national policies and church policies, and the subjugation of people's taste to the common thinking and you know everything. He's, complains this whole life through. And he lived until uh, the end of the century. And uh, at the end of his life, a folklorist came and, and uh, asked for some of his journals to publish in the Revue de Paris. And then uh, he heard nothing for another 10 years and he was convinced that it was another ripoff, another somebody else who was taking him for a ride. And then just before he died, he saw at least a part of the thing published in the Revue de France with, with Key, uh, Apollinaire, I mean, with, with other great names in literature. Even that, he was happy with that, but his life, his life was not happy.